My uncle had various hobbies. One of them was to play the ukulele. I was four or five years old. I'd spent hours playing this instrument, and that was the beginning of it. And then, you know, rock and roll happened and the influx of American music into England. So by 1956, uh, I wanted a guitar for my 10th birthday. I went to the record store and found two Leroy Vinegar records. I got an upright bass within about two weeks of hearing those records. And I started to go to some jazz clubs locally and listen to the local musicians. Then by the time I was 15, I decided I was going to leave school and be a musician. My first job as an acoustic bass player was in a resort town of Scarborough. That was followed by a tour with Johnny Ray, who was an American singer. And I got asked to go on tour with him for three weeks with a big band from London. I moved to London and, and worked there for a year. I started doing some gigs in these sort of early New Orleans style bands and playing King Oliver music and Louis Armstrong and playing in pubs. The Ronnie Scott Club was there. I started meeting young players that were my own generation. And we were interested in, of course, in all the new music, Ornette Coleman's music and John Coltrane and Miles Davis, Cecil Taylor, Albert Isler. Between 65 and 68, I'm so grateful for the kind of education that I got from the community in London. In 1968, I was invited to play with Miles Davis's band. I was 21 and I played with Miles for two years. Miles had directions that he was looking to move in, but he looked very much to the musicians to fill in those spaces. It was another level of concentration, another level of immersion in the music. I think this is one of the things that was uh, so amazing about his music, that it was always in movement. We were also using electric piano and the electric bass. The last three months of touring with Mars, I didn't take the acoustic bass on the road with me at all. I started to feel that I was moving away from what I was really wanting to be able to do or play the instrument I really wanted to play. I'd started on a project with Chick Corea and Barry Altshaw. We'd been playing as a trio and we met up with Anthony Braxton. So we went from playing half a million people at the Isle of Wight to about 30 people in a little club in San Francisco, you know. I worked with several other ensembles until about 76. And then from 76 to 80, I decided only to work with Sam Rivers. I literally didn't take any gigs with anybody else. We could play very freely, abstractly at times. When you start a band, you never know where it's going to go. I didn't know what would happen with that group, if it was going to be together six months or it'd be one record. I decided that I was going to make the prime directive that things had to be fun. It was just the right combination of people at the right time. Prime directive ended up being together for 12 or 13 years. This is not something you do in isolation, this music. It's something that's a shared event. Ideas are shared experiences shared, and then it's passed on to other generations. And that's a very, very important thing. People from diverse backgrounds, diverse cultures, can come together and find common ground and create something beautiful and something meaningful. But I think the magic for me has always been that element of dialogue and communication in the music. <laughs>